every innovation, scientific discovery and advance in technology was a leap into the unknown. It's our history, our heritage and the basis for what we do today. At MPL, the National Physical Laboratory, the UK's National Metrology Institute. Metrology is the science of measurement and measurement underpins all of our lives. If you can measure something, you can improve it. and We can improve the health of our citizens, the planet that we live in and the way that we communicate and the way that we go about our daily lives. So, for example, the emissions that are causing so much damage to our planet, we really need to measure those in order to understand the impact that they're having. And we can do that. By measuring the impact on the planet, we can then see and understand the changes that we've made and whether we've made a difference. And then time. We take incredibly accurate measurements of time, and time underpins so much in our society, whether it's positioning for the way that we travel, whether it's autonomous systems or our future cities, or whether it's the way that the financial systems trade, both in the UK and abroad. We provide confidence that all of those things can operate effectively. But we also apply all of that science to work with thousands of companies and organisations in the UK. And many of those companies grow, they develop new technologies, new products, they might employ more people. And all of that comes back to the support and the help that we give them on the back of the measurement work that we do. Here at MPL, we provide the underpinning measurement capability for the UK's prosperity and quality of life. A thread of digital innovation has been woven through our story. MPL has frequently been ahead of the curve in making key contributions to the development of the internet, data security, biometrics, climate monitoring, artificial intelligence, image processing, sensor networks and other forms of scientific computing. From the proposal of the first computer to the development of packet switching, and the early works on chip and pin cards, MPL ensures that the UK can provide international leadership in measurement. In 1875, 17 nations signed the Meter Convention. It's an international treaty, and they also established the headquarters of that treaty in Paris, the BIPM. Their vision was to replace the myriad, probably hundreds of thousands of measurement standards around the world with a single global system of measurement for all time and for all people. Well, 25 years later in 1900, the UK government established MPL. And within a few years, it was on the site at Teddington in Bushy House, which was a former royal residence where William IV and his queen, Queen Adelaide, had spent some time and lived. And when it was founded, it had a broad remit. It was there to bring the best science to make a real difference to the world, something that's still the case now. But even then at the start, there was a focus on ensuring that people could have confidence uh, in the consistency and accuracy of measurement. The present International System of Measurement Units, the SI, was established by a resolution at the 11th meeting of the General Conference of Weights and Measures in Paris. It created a truly global system of consistency in the language that's exchanged in science, in technology, in trade, in industry, in healthcare, in a whole variety of human activities. Indeed, measurement is the often invisible exchange in just about every human activity. And having confidence in, in the consistency and accuracy of measurements is absolutely critical. The role of metrology in our lives day to day isn't new. We've been using standard weights and measures up to about 4,000 years ago with the ancient Egyptians. The cubit is a measure of length. It's represented as a black granite rod and is the measurement between the tip of the pharaoh's finger and his elbow. So this is a cubit, uh, an Egyptian form of measurement dating back to 3000 BC. When big projects like the pyramid were being undertaken, workers would be given a copy of this, either in wood or granite, and they would use it to make the components of an individual building. Once a month, at the full moon, these individual cubits had to be taken back and compared to the master cubit held by the head of the project. They took this comparison so seriously that failure to return your cubit for comparison with a master cubit was punishable by death. This is the first example of a traceability chain in our history. People needed to understand 
that when you're initiating a trade, what you're giving and receiving can be comparable. As if this doesn't happen, one party is going to be unsatisfied. This just goes to show how important weights and measures have been throughout human history. So this cabinet here contains artefacts related to the work that MPL did immediately after the Second World War in the area of electronic computing. It contains some photographs of the early machines, the pilot ace and the follow-on, the full-scale ace. It also has a photograph of and the staff card of the leader of that work, Alan Turing, who is now really well known as one of the founders of the whole area of the digital world and electronic computing. The world is transforming into a digital space, fueled by new and emerging technology, but we need to make sure that it's safe, reliable and robust. Back in the 1900s when MPL was first established, metrology was very much a physical exercise. We take a physical measurement and compare it to an actual artefact. That's a thing of the past. We've taken the kilogram from a block of platinum iridium and over to a number defined by Planck's constant. This will enable us to take digital measurements anywhere in the world. The biggest change to the international system of units was the redefinition of the kilogram. Prior to the 20th of May 2019, it was defined as the mass of the international prototype of the kilogram, IPK, which lived at the BIPM in France. After the 20th of May 2019, it was defined in terms of the Planck constant, which is a fundamental physical constant which is naturally occurring, like the speed of light. This means that we don't rely on me not dropping something like this to get all of our measurements for the UK. It's defined by something that exists in science and that will never change. The International System of Units is a practical measurement system that's designed to be used and to be useful. And it's for these reasons that it's evolved over the years to meet the changing demands of stakeholders. And in the last 50 years or so, advances in atomic physics and quantum measurement have meant that we've been able to move our unit definitions away from physical artefacts towards material properties and ultimately fundamental constants. And we want our unit definitions based on fundamental constants because these are the most stable and accurate things we can, we can base them on. And in a landmark decision at the 26th General Conference on Weights and Measures, it was decided that all the base units would be defined in terms of defining constants, fundamental constants. And so from the 20th of May 2019, we had new definitions for the kilogram, the mole, the Kelvin and the ampere. And the other three base units were defined or rewritten in terms of um, emphasising their dependence on their defining constants. And so after that, we had a system of units which was future-proofed and meant that advances in technology could be realised directly in improvements in measurement and we had a virtuous circle where improved technology led to improved measurement and led to improved technology. And of course more accurate measurement is a universal good, uh, it improves efficiency, reduces waste and increases our speed of progress in science and in society. There's lots of change happening at the moment. We're seeing units being realised closer to their point of use, which means that we end up with lower uncertainties and people have more accurate measurements. And also we're seeing an increased use of networks of low cost sensors that can make widespread measurements over an area and enable us by linking the data from them together to get a better understanding of, for instance, how much pollution a factory might be causing. And so we can help to improve that factory's processes. MPL's role in the changes is to be able to provide confidence in digital data. What we're interested in doing is being able to provide traceability and uncertainty evaluation so that the people who use digital data to make their decisions can have confidence that they have the right data and that it's of an appropriate quality. What digital products and services could people expect? Well, at the moment, MPL is developing a wide range of different tools that will allow people to access their data. So for instance, if people regularly send a device to MPL to be calibrated, then they will be able to access the history of that data and see how their device is changing over time. In addition, we're also able to offer remote calibration for some devices where we would send 
an artefact out to people, they will make measurements on it and send us the results and we will process those results to be able to explain to them what was happening to their device and how they can make better measurements. Confidence in data is incredibly important because there are many challenges facing the world at the moment that need to be informed by data and need to be informed by reliable data. It's really important, not just that we have good quality data, but we're able to demonstrate independently that it's good quality data by having an uncertainty and a traceability chain associated with it so that we can prove this is good data. Our world is becoming increasingly digital and data-driven, and so we're really excited with the theme of this year's Open Day, is digital innovation. And so we're delighted to be able to explain how all of the work that we do underpins the future world that we're going to be living in. Whether it's new technologies such as quantum computing, or whether it's the way that we're going to be communicating in the future, it all comes back to accurate, precise measurement.